This video is a joint production between TrueTechTools.com and HVACRSchool.com. True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. TrueTechTools.com. Hey, I'm Brian with the HVAC School podcast and HVACRSchool.com, and I'm here with uh, my tech, Bert. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. I'm Bert. We're going to show you some features of the machine along the way, as well as some best practices for getting a great recovery. Hey, there's a drone flying above us. There's not, there's not really. It's not really a drone. It looks just like a scale. <laughs> Tiny and light. Yeah. Woo. Oh, wait. That's not it. That, that's actually a scale. All right. Unbox it. It's open. Wow. Mm. It actually, that's actually really light. Yeah. Wow. What's the first thing you notice about it? It was light. Uh, no, but what else? It's no, small. Notice some other things. Small. Okay. What else? What else? It's got a digital display. When you see the digital display, what does it make you think you can do with that? I could recover without even gauges. Look at the size of that coil. It's a good size coil. This machine has a significant condenser in it. A lot of cut recovery machines have very small condensers. This system has a significant condenser, which does help to cool the refrigerant uh, before it goes into the tank and keeps a, a cooler tank. However, when your condenser has a significant size to it, that also means it holds a significant refrigerant amount of refrigerant once you're done, because the condenser comes after the compressor. So if you think of it this way, when it's in recover mode, when it's actually here in recover mode, you have the inlet port, it's drawing into the compressor and then out of the compressor into the condenser and then out of the port. Well, when you shut this off, you're going to run into a problem because you're going to have all of that trapped refrigerant. So when you switch it to purge, what it does is, is it actually shuts off the inlet. So it shuts off this port and then it reports the condenser to the inlet of the compressor as opposed to the outlet. And it forces out all that refrigerant that's trapped in the condenser. So the only thing left when you're done with the purge will be a very, very small amount that's in the actual head of the compressor and in this tube, which will just be a tiny, tiny bit. Go ahead and carry that out. I'll follow you. I'll carry this scale. Like I, don't, I almost don't even need to use my hands. It's so light. <laughs> I, I could just like- what would you, Where are you going? We're gonna go recover from something. So just like with evacuation and recovery, you wanna remove as many restrictions as you can possibly remove. So right now, Bert is removing the cores from the system. So we'll be ready to do a nice fast recovery. We're gonna see how quickly we can pull this down. Yeah, that's not a lot of, not a lot of space for recovery if you look at a Schrader. Uh -huh. So pulling those out is probably the number one mm -hmm. cause of slow recovery. It's going to actually act as a, almost like a metering device for the refrigerant. Any liquid refrigerant is pulling out, it'll definitely decrease yep. liquid recovery time. Don't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Good. <laughs> Make sure that you've pulled a proper vacuum on your tank before you try to use it. Anytime you put a tank in surface, put a micron gauge on it, pull a deep vacuum on it, and make sure that you're all the way down as low as you can get it. In general, you should be able to pull a tank down to 250 to 300 microns fairly easily. When you're recovering, you wanna weigh your refrigerant out of the system in the same way that you weigh it in. And the tear weight on this, this is a really hard to see, but it is 27.8 stamped on the tank right there. And our water capacity is 47.7. We're not putting water in this thing. We're putting refrigerant in it. Did you know that? Yeah, uh, well, yeah, I, okay. I know that now. You only want to fill your tank to 80%. Most of you probably already know that, but that's 80% of the refrigerant capacity of that tank, not just the water capacity. Now, as it turns out, R22 and water actually have a very similar weight to volume ratio, but other refrigerants like 410A can hold significantly less volume of refrigerant based on the weight. So you need to make sure that you do those conversions. Look inside here. This is where the screen is located on the inlet. But if you ever had any gunk in there, you would want to get that cleared out or replace the screen. You know, it is a best practice to have line dryers in the circuit and the inlet of your recovery machine to help dry and clean the refrigerant before it hits your machine. It just makes your machine last longer and also helps clean the refrigerant as it goes through the machine. Trouble is, is that quarter inch line dryers, quarter inch flare dryers can be kind of hard to locate at a lot of supply houses. But what you can do fairly easily is you can take a 3 8 line dryer, which tends to be a little easy, more readily available, and you can use a 3 8 line dryer in place of a quarter inch. You just have to get some quarter inch to 3 8 adapters. So female 3 8 to quarter inch male adapters. And when you're really in a pinch, 
you can grab some fittings and some high silver solder and make up some yourself, kind of like I did. All right, so here's how we, where we get a little extreme. I recognize that most of you are not gonna have this set up, but we're just demonstrating um, the quickest and best way to do a recovery. And so we have non quarter presser, very large hoses. We got a half inch connection to a half inch to three eighths T here. And we're gonna be connecting uh, these lines to the system. And then we're coming out of here and connecting it to the pump. And then we're also using a hose without a quarter presser to go from the tank to the recovery machine. So when I say pump, I mean recovery machine. And we're using an enormous half inch a flare line dryer that is going to not restrict our, not reduce our capacity at all and still do a good job of, of filtering uh, and drying the refrigerant. Now, of course, we're going to go through and use Nylog on all of our connection points for our recovery machine uh, just to make sure that everything's nice and snug. Nylog is just a great assembly lubricant and it helps make sure, especially when you're pulling vacuums like you are often when you're doing recovery, that you just have a nice tight fit on all of your joints. So I put Nylog, a little Nylog, on the mating surfaces of every single hose and every connection point. If you look inside these hoses, there's no core depressor in them. And they're also quarter inch adapters, but they're actually three eighths hoses. So they have a lot of nice open area in them. Hey, audience, can you hear me that? We I need do. a volunteer from the audience. <laughs> we do have a bit of an audience here. So you can see we've got the gigantic hose set up here going to the T, going into our half inch line dryer. I made up a little adapter with uh, high silver solder and uh, some flux. We're going from quarter inch to three eighths. So we're removing the restrictions of gauges. We're removing the restrictions. The biggest one would be the restrictions associated with um, Schrader cores. We're removing quarter presser restrictions, so we have no quarter pressers in the circuit. None of these hoses have quarter pressers. And then we've got a totally empty 50-pound uh, tank, and we are going to be hooking to the vapor side and turning the tank upside down. Right, Bert? No. Yeah, we are. Now, according to the manufacturer's rec recommendations, they don't want you storing it in the closed position because pressure can build up. Another thing to consider is if you have it in the closed position when you do put it into service, you want to make sure that the caps are off and it's put into the recover position before you actually start to recover so that you can check and make sure that the display actually zeroes out. Otherwise, you'll be reading incorrect pressures. All right, so we are zeroed. Make sure to always purge your hoses. When you have these enormous hoses, you want to purge until you know that all the air's out. So we are all the way open, 301. I still can't see anything. 301, there we go. Alright, let's see how long it takes. Over two pounds. Not where I would be with four pounds on another tank. Yeah, that's definitely. Five minutes and we are at five. see that it's at zero PSI, but it's still running because it's actually going to pull itself down into a vacuum. Something else to consider when you're doing a recovery is why is your system in need of recovery in the first place? Is your system leaking? And if you are replacing the system or you're doing a recovery because of, the, of a leaking of apparatus coil or some other sort of leak, are you really going to want to pull that into a deep vacuum? And the answer is no, you're not going to want to. If you have a system that is, has a known leak, you need to pull it down into the EPA required vacuum, depending on the type of system that it is, but really no further, because anytime you go into a vacuum on a leaking system, you're pulling air and moisture into that system. Not good. As you can see on this chart, any high pressure appliance and any HFC with under 200 pounds of refrigerant in it doesn't require to be pulled below atmospheric pressure based on EPA requirements. Uh, the thing with this system, it doesn't have that much refrigerant. So we pulled out about a pound per minute until we hit zero PSI. And now uh, the last part, which is, takes much longer, we're waiting for it to go into a vacuum and shut itself off. All right, so it completed. I didn't catch it in time. It was still beeping, but we got five pounds, six ounces out of it. Now we're gonna try it with a more typical application without the big fancy hoses and see, see how we do. We're 
go ahead and do the, put the tank in the ice water. See what that does to our pressure. That's all gonna demonstrate the effect of the old ice water trick. It's just my cooler in the van. Coffee's really important to everything we do out here. That is true. Keeps us going. Complete. So we are complete. And so you turn that on and walk away. We are at 23 things. minutes. So 23 total minutes to do eight pounds. But we right. hit um, zero at 11 minutes. So, so now, zero PSI on our system at 11 minutes. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, and purge it, self-purge. We're going to hit the start button twice. There it goes. Make sure it's all in the tank. So we just finished our purge as well. So now we are good to close everything off. And like they say, they want you to store it in the recover or in the purge mode, not in the close mode. So we learned a couple important things about recovery. Having a good machine matters. Also, you want to remove all possible line restrictions. First of all, starting with core removers. That seems to be the most important part. Get those cores out of the system when you're doing a recovery. You also want to make sure that you're using the largest possible hoses you can use, but don't use the same hoses that you're using for evacuation. Because when you're recovering a system, you're pulling all this refrigerant and, and other junk through those lines. You don't want all that in your lines when you're trying to pull a vacuum. You don't have to use a gauge manifold with the MR45, which is a nice thing. Uh, is it a really big deal? Probably not. A gauge manifold isn't the most significant restriction in the lines, but if you don't need to use a manifold, don't use a manifold. What they do suggest is, is that if you're going to store it for a long period of time, that you purge it with nitrogen, and then you leave it in the recover position with the caps on, but not actually sealed. So covering it from dust getting in, but not completely sealed. So in summary, follow good recovery practices, remove all of your restrictions, and you can get all the products that we showed at truetechtools.com. So for True Tech Tools and HVAC School, I've been Brian Orr. Have a good one. For all the great tools that you saw in this video, go to truetechtools.com and use the offer code GETSCHOOLED at checkout for a great discount. Oh, we found the problem though. This uh, recovery tank has a bad capacitor. Probably has a bad TXV too. Let's just go ahead and replace them to be safe. I mean, I've had all sorts of equipment fall out of the back of my van while I was driving away. It's true. <laughs> Um, really have. Let's not talk about this right now. Yeah. Well, we'll skip this for definitely. a later conversation that we'll never have. Rode out, so we should be about 27.7 if this tank is empty, which I know that it is. Well, you know, close enough. Yeah. The weight of the stickers is what's <laughs> making it a little heavier. All right. <laughs> uh, Steve stopped by. He's headed to Japan. Visit his son. Yep. In the, he's in the Navy, right? Yeah. In the Navy? Yeah. yeah. In the Kuska. Yeah. American Navy too, right? American Navy. Not the, not the British Navy. Not the British Navy. <laughs> Those guys caused us a lot of trouble back in the day. <laughs> I had to go across to France. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> they don't venture out too far now. Yeah, that's, that's true. And then sometimes when you're waiting for your recovery to finish, you can um, just go climb a tree, sit up in a tree. It's, uh, it's at minus 11 now. Is it? Yeah. All right. Let me know if it drops. Okay. Well, it's kind of going back and forth between 10 and 11. Is it? All right. Comes with an extra mesh screen in there. You don't want that to get clogged. But more importantly, you don't want anything that could clog it in your system. There you go. You clean this out with uh, mineral spirits. <laughs> it doesn't actually say that. Yes, it does. Right. Uh, maintenance. Uh, Life Pro Seal's occasional pump teaspoon of mineral oil. Oh, uh, mineral oil. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I might have said mineral spirits. <laughs> oh, heavens.
Whew, I was just sitting here reading the ASHRAE journal. That's what I generally do, is sit in my office and read the ASHRAE journal. Clearly, you also have time on your hands because you're sitting here looking at me sitting in my office. So if you do have some time on your hands, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to the channel right here? Or maybe you might want to watch another great video. There's one right here that you could watch. Possibly you need some really high quality tools from one of the best suppliers of high quality test instrumentation in the HVAC industry. Well, by all means, go right there and do that. Or you can just sit here and read the Ashtray Journal with me.